is springtime here in the south and my three primary hives are doing great. My girls have been starting to come out and get their foraging on. You can actually see all the little pollen on their back legs as they enter into their little house. Those little yellow boots are them collecting all of the goodies. Uh, I suspect I've got some queens on the way, so I'm going to have to be making some splits and some swarm traps in the coming days. But along with the preparation for spring, much like I did last year, there's some things that happen with air conditioning. First of which is I have a frog, a finished room over garage, over here that is... So that frog notoriously got really warm even with the central air in the house. And I have two two-ton or twenty-five or 24,000 BTU air handlers in the house. And I originally put in a advanced what are called mini split window units up there. And it did a good job, but I needed something more permanent. And that's when I got in touch with Signature Solar about the EG4 24,000 BTU to ton mini split. That mini split uses AC and DC to cool and I ordered two of them. One was for the garage and one was for this upstairs room. Now I loved the unit so much I actually installed another one of this exact unit upstairs. Sorry, my little board fell over here. And this thing is phenomenal. It has run flawlessly to heat and cool my house all winter long without skipping a beat. I've had zero problems with it and it has used a tenth of the energy that I would have had I used my central air units. Now I haven't used the central air units since installing these, but what I have done is ordered a third one of these, which will be here on Tuesday. I'll do an install, which will then cool my whole garage. So it is the season to prepare for thinking about, oh yeah, giant bamboo I just got too. It's a 25 foot tall yellow bamboo, all the things ADD. Um, but this is the season where you have to start thinking about swarms because it's warm and you have to start thinking about AC because it's really warm for places that get really warm. So this is that mini split style AC window unit. Now you can see it has a U trough in it and we'll go inside and talk about it a little bit. And this makes for a really good conditioning for smaller spaces. I think this is made for about 800 square feet. This is a 12,000 BTU or one ton window unit. Now, that is now supplying cold air for this, which is the tack room, which is now just the barn room. I have a refrigerator running out here. I have two incubators going. I am powering the house. I work from home, so I'm drawing a ton of power for that. The pool pump's running, and my solar system, even um, yesterday we had clouds all day, and my solar room here is still cranking in power, uh, charged up to batteries to 85% today and by tomorrow they'll be at 100% by noon even with this thing running. Now I'll set this room to 70. I'll probably cool it down a little bit more. I just didn't want to run it too aggressively. This room gets really hot from these units. Now what just happened was it heated all the way up and so the thermal mass, so the total objects that have that heat in them now have to alleviate that heat throughout the entire thing. So I like to kind of do that as a, a slow process and kind of pull all that air back out evenly. And then it doesn't work this unit too hard. And then once I've normalized that temperature, it should be able to stay there relatively easy. But this is the only unit that I'll be needing to use to cool this during the spring and now summer months to maintain this battery room as cool as it can possibly be. So I had a ton of questions in my last video about preparation for building out this battery room and considerations for your first time solar project. Uh, that video is the previous one I did uh, and a lot of folks asked specifically about how do you keep it cool. So that's how I keep it cool. That unit was in here uh, previous to this room being what it was just to keep this room dry most specifically and cool because we have uh, 10 goats, like 50 chickens and some otherwise you know, farm animals that we need to keep the grain away from humidity. And that's a big problem here where I am in the south. So I now have this battery room which creates a ton of heat, which I don't need in this room. So in the winter months, this actually heats the entire space, which is great. But in the summer months, I'm gonna have to actually spend a little bit more of my hard earned solar power on keeping this room cool. Like I said, it should be able to do that most efficiently once the room is at temperature, just like in greenhouses, the thermal mass of this room will keep and normalize the temperature. 
Um, but this is a really cool unit. It's the Medea. Uh, they sell these on Amazon. I think they're like 350, 400 bucks. Probably this time of year they're a little bit more. And now with tariffs and all that, keep obviously an eye out. But these window units do a great job at keeping about 800 square feet cool. Uh, and it gives you all the seals and all the brackets to do it so that it keeps it safe. Um, but yeah, highly recommend that. Stay tuned. I'll have many more updates on the power consumption as I head into summer and I'm cooling the house at as high volume as I can and keeping this room cool along the way. So if you have any questions, put them down below. There were a bunch of questions last time, some really awesome ones. Um, one that I really want to address and I think a lot of people taking on these projects get away with due to code in their local area is DC conductors in EMT. So in the NEC code as of 2020, in or on buildings, you must use for DC components of a PV system. And then PV system used to be defined by everything that came off the roof. So this is the photovoltaic power source, comes from the roof over there, stretches around, comes here to the first means of disconnect. Well, now in 2020, it, it includes this as it comes in here and the DC for the batteries because that is part of the PV system and not the PV power source. Those words are described differently, but the code does require that the DC conductors travel through these metallic raceways or EMT. Um, now, there is a really strange thing because this is in a building, this does apply to on a building, and there is a really strange subset of the code that does describe that battery rooms cannot use flexible metal conduit. So in a battery room, and this is all to code, our code here is really good at following all the details, and I passed first time for the electrical inspection, so everything is in metal raceways, conduits, uh, otherwise, so this is what code looks like if you want to be up to code. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, I don't need to do that. And you know what? You don't in some cases where they don't have inspections. But the reason code asks you to do this isn't because it costs more. It's because it's safer. Code is dictated by fire marshals, insurance companies, and people who work in the trades who see these things fail. And this is the safest way to make sure your system does not burn your property down. That's basically what they're trying to avoid is you getting electrocuted or your facility burning down. So think through why a code would be written. It's not because the code people have it in in the back door with some conduit manufacturer and they get some 2% on their sales. That's not a, you know, you can have all the conspiracies you want, but that's not one that's real. This is because safety is paramount to the installation of solar equipment. And when you get into all of electrical code, that's basically why it all exists, is to keep you safe and to keep insurance companies from having to pay for you burning your house down through bad wire management. So that one came up a bunch um, in a lot of the forums as well. So just use EMT when you're installing DC conductors in your PV system. Keep it cool as much as you can. And if you're in the South, get ready for swarm season. So I'll do some content about that. I'm gonna be building out some of my extra boxes and showing some catches from this year as I expand my apiary. Stay tuned, give it a thumbs up if you like it.